everybody welcome back to mojo group mike here today i am out here in the freezing cold in charleston south carolina we actually flew here you can see we're parked right there but i've been waiting to show you guys this airplane behind me stay tuned we're gonna check out the series now this is an interesting plane to pronounce one because of the name see literally you can pronounce it as serious or serious it's spelled serious um but this is an airplane that i've personally been waiting to get a hands on what you're looking at is a light sport but also a plane that is capable and this plane is from tl sports uh as you know tl check out the low wing version that they have this is a company that is innovating and innovating with the no rules that are coming through now this series model it's a light sport standard but also this plane can be an elsa it comes standard with the road tax there you go 912 but this plane can also be fitted with a road tax 916 which is a heavier engine with more and better performance it is a high wing some of you who have followed me long enough know that i'm more of a low wing guy but i can tell you that in checking out this baby before i even turn the camera on it's a nice interior in there um and in time i'm actually going to take it up and show you guys how it flies one thing you notice here also is that it comes standard with a parachute and for those guys and girls who are nervous about medical and faa restrictions guess what this is a standard fixed landing gear airplane that you can get into right and still go the distance so the normal cruise speed on this airplane is about 114 to 117 knots and with that you're burning about four or five gallons an hour okay i came back up here because i want to talk about the power plant as you know road tax basically has the market when it comes to light sport airplanes uh, and that is the case with this. These planes come equipped standard with a 912 engine. But as I said, you can put a heavier road tax 916 uh, with more horsepower and you probably get better performance with that. You do have a nice tiny teeny propeller there. <laughs> um, now, these planes are also fixed pitch, right? That's one of the limitation of light sport. You can have a constant speed prop. And the interior is my favorite part because this is where you spend most of your time as a pilot. Now, I've sat in these seats and I'm going to sit in it again just to show you. These are very nice and comfortable. They are sitting right on the floor of the airplane and I'll show you how to get in it in a minute. But I love the attention that's paid to details here. This is a very simple airplane, guys. But you can tell that they took their time in designing this thing. You've got a nice luggage area back there, so you can put about 55 pounds of luggage. But what's more cool about the design of this plane that I like is the big cutout windows, right? So you don't feel enclosed in this thing. You've got a big window there. You've got a big window there. You've got a big window back here as well. And of course, once you close the door, you also have a nice big window and boom, you can see 100 miles out of this thing right here now let's get back to the cockpit area so you look at this also very standard with light sports you have one lever this is your throttle this here believe it or not is your trim and something that i found interesting guys i i have come to respect tl because they put like little things little touches so you've got heated seats in this plane right both seats are heated you've got your flaps switch here again very simple you notice they didn't load anything crazy up here flaps halfway full flaps boom your fuel selector right there and also you've got your rudder pedals and i love how they really brought this to the 21st century where it tells you you have a nice picture and label for everything so these rudders are adjustable so you can pull them towards you or away from you uh, same with the other side now what's more interesting about this airplane let me zoom out a little bit is that you get something that you might be used to so if you're coming in from a cessna 150 or 172 you've got a yoke and you can see that it's just clean 
It is just a clean yoke, nothing too busy here. You've got some buttons uh, and switches on it. So this come with a yoke. Uh, you've got analog right there, but I'm gonna turn this plane around so I can properly show you the nice deck of Garmin avionics you've got on here. Okay, this is a light sport, guys. This is a light sport. <laughs> um, you've got, man, just rainbow. You've got a nice G3X Touch primary display here. This is 10 inches. I had to put my gloves on. Um, you've got another G3X, which is a seven inch. As a matter of fact, this is the first time I'm seeing a seven inch uh, G3X, but it's it's perfect the way it fits into there. As a secondary display, you've got a, your radios. This plane comes with two radios. You got analog back up there. And of course, you've got the massive GTN 650. So you can train instrument in this airplane and also potentially fly IMC. I'll talk about that in a little bit. Got compass up there. But something interesting that I also love about the design of this airplane, look up here. This is where they put your electronics, your, your electric switches and the autopilot. And I think for a flight program or a flight school looking to train career pilots, this is perfect. Because it's all about muscle memory, right? When you get into the big Boeing jets, usually your switches are up top. So I think this is great for a flight training uh, operation. Um, but man, I just, very neat, very neat. I, mean, I could just stay staring at this thing for a little bit longer. Uh, but this is a fully decked out cockpit, okay? And of course, you're gonna pay some uh, extra pennies for it. Now, this plane comes standard with two of this, believe it or not. You don't get the GTN 650, but you get two of this radio. Uh, parachute comes standard. Now, if you want more extra features that gives you IFR capabilities, then you put the GTN, and of course, you pay a little extra for that. But guys, I mean, it's, it's hard to f fault this thing for any other feature you could possibly want. I think TL did a great job with this airplane. So now let me show you what it'll feel like for you to actually sit in it, okay? So first, the doors open up, right? Now, high wing is generally great for folks who, listen, you gotta be a little bit athletic and you gotta love your knees when you get into a low wing. Like the plane, see that's my plane there. Let me zoom in a little bit. Look at all these low wings parked. To get in that plane as beautiful as it is, you, you gotta love on your knees, right? You gotta get up on one step, two step, and then hop into the airplane. Whereas with this plane, let's zoom out. With this plane, you basically tuck yourself in standing up. So it's less hassle to get in and out. That is one thing I would always give to high wing airplanes is the ingress and degress is, is a lot more easier on the body. And so let me show you how to get in this airplane. So guys, to get in, you're gonna scoot your butt in, as I will show you right now. Basically, scoot your butt in. Okay? Look, I'm 5'10", this is a ton of room up here. So for a taller person, you'd have no problem getting in here. And then you bring your feet inside and this is already at the perfect setting for me right and this is what it looks like with me sitting in here again it's another headroom and with i have to get the cabin width for you it's on your screen right now the seats are generous probably like to have more padding so these seats feel a little bit more like sports seats um they're not i don't know if you can tell that i'm sitting a little bit inclined like this right but you sit into the airplane and the the front here is a little bit inclined up as well but you have the perfect position as you can see my hand here look that's how i'm sitting um and you have everything within touch guys i love where they put the parachute pull it's right under you so you have access to it and that's standard by the way uh, for all tl sport airplane you have standard a parachute um you do have analog as backup, but as I said, a fully decked out interior. Now, let me step out. We'll talk some numbers, okay? So, to get out the same way, the same way you got in, 
boom. You literally just step out of the airplane. Who is this airplane for, right? We review a ton of airplanes in Mojo Grip. Um, and this one, I think, is for the pilot who may not be able to pass their medical, the pilot who just wants to buzz around and have something to either go grab a burger, but also go on a cross-country flight. This is a six to seven hour airplane, okay? You have fuel tanks, 34 gallons, and you're burning roughly five gallons an hour of fuel, okay? Now, the only thing that you may compromise on when it comes to light sport is you can only carry one passenger, but also you're limited to 13, 20 pounds. But guess what? Mosaic is on the horizon. And so this plane, this frame as it is, can actually go up to 1,600 pounds. And once Mosaic passes, that will be the case. But as it is today, right? You're still at 13, 20 pounds, and you've got 34 gallons of fuel, 100 horsepower engine. You can put a bigger engine in there. Just make sure, obviously, you're playing with, you know, how much load that you want to carry, and so on and so forth. Now, as shown with dual G3X, GTN 650, autopilot, all the bells and whistles, you're looking at $275,000 for a brand new series. Now, if you wanted a lower entry level with a glass cockpit, might I had, you still have your dual G3X touch, okay, with this plane. You still have radio, ADSB, um, you still have the parachute, leather seating. At that, you're at $225,000, okay? The last feature that I would say that you get with this airplane is this. You can also fly an IMC. Don't quote me on that. So with TL, you're able to get an LOA from the manufacturer that allows you to fly an IMC. That's the other part that I haven't talked about with this plane. This is a perfect trainer for flight schools. We're actually looking at this airplane at our flight school because it comes well equipped and I think it will be a game changer when we can fly a plane like this into IMC for training purposes, okay? That's been another limitation for airplanes or light sport in general, whereas this airplane can break that envelope. So there you have it. If you're looking at a light sport aircraft, a special light sport, uh, ELSA, and one that I think is affordable, but also very practical, you should definitely check out this plane, especially if you're a high wing guy. Uh, and you haven't made a choice yet, I think this, this plane is, is worth uh, checking out. I personally am interested in this aircraft for our training program, uh, but of course, I will let you know how that go. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. If this is your first time, be sure to subscribe to the channel. Hey, also consider supporting Mojo Grip, become a member, and we'll keep the videos coming. Thanks so much for watching, and I will catch you on the next video. Peace.